This was a back and forth game that Dallas, they, they spent the vast majority of this game trailing. They went to Milwaukee. Milwaukee's overall health and roster availability was significantly greater than that of Dallas coming into this game. Dallas obviously with the five players out, which includes a pair of starters. That's going to put you in a tough situation no matter what. Like you're going to be hard pressed to work around that most of the time. But despite that setback and despite that disadvantage, Dallas held close throughout this game. Now, in the end, we know they end up falling 112-109 and had several cracks at either taking the lead or tying the game in the closing minutes. But they never, I mean, they got eventually a lead late in the game within the final couple minutes, but Milwaukee made a couple good plays and Dallas missed several shots that would have tied or put them ahead. So that's kind of the breaks. Now, going into the game more itself, let's rewind a little bit. Dallas started out this game pretty decently, but Milwaukee rattles off a 12-0 run midway through the first quarter. Dallas' offense is very slow starting in this game. It's 18-3, Milwaukee's on that 12-0 run, and Dallas's offense looks sluggish. They didn't look like they were, if it makes sense, they didn't look like they were mentally prepared for this game. They didn't look like they had that urgency in their movement, whereas Milwaukee Milwaukee beat them up on the boards. Milwaukee was physical. Milwaukee was forcing turnovers. Dallas making some unforced. They didn't have a lot of turnovers, but they were unforced errors. And those are always frustrating when you have to deal with that. When you feel like your team didn't show up prepared to win. And that echoes kind of uh, something we'll hear in postgame from Carlisle as well. But, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't bode well when you're in a big matchup game and you're trying to prove that you're for real, you are the second rated defensive efficiency team in the league, despite having the hardest schedule in the NBA thus far, and yet your record is just a tick over 500 now, and you go out there and you kind of lay an egg like to start the game. It's, it's a, not a great look. Now, Milwaukee, it's not like the defense got routed. Even in the end, they give up 112. But they just didn't look like they were playing with the proper urgency early on. Now, coming into the game, KP, this is a quote from Followell during the game. He says, KP says he doesn't care if he plays the four or five, so long as he's the trailer on the break. That I made a note of because it was reminiscent to me of vintage Dirk Nowitzki. Coming down the trailing three, that was classic Dirk. And uh, hearing KP say that I thought was pretty cool, especially since we have a lot of discussion all the time about should he play the four, should he play the five, where is he more comfortable? He's, you know, we know he obviously said in the past that he preferred the four, didn't like the five, but he broke out last year playing the five. So there's been discussion there. He basically is saying, I don't care so long as I'm still in the situations I'm comfortable and that I succeed. Fair enough. That seems pretty reasonable. In this, we have a situation where uh, Giannis, Giannis is dominant early. Like, don't get me, don't get me wrong. Obviously, Giannis is going to be dominant no matter what. He's the two-time reigning MVP. But in this game, a particular, you know, a particular opportunity presented itself that again I felt Dallas failed to capitalize on. Giannis, despite early in his career being a mid seventies free throw shooter, has plummeted off the map. In recent years, he's shooting on like 120 free throw attempts now this year. He's shooting like 57 and a half percent. He went like one of 10 or one of 11 at the line tonight or last night. That is abysmal. Like we we can talk about free throws all we want. Dallas, a team that usually lives at the free throw line, did not get there hardly at all last night. Uh, Luca, who had been shooting free throws great this year, three of seven, I think was his final line there, like line at the line, if you will, that's not going to get it done. It's it's a weird thing where as close as this game were, was, there were opportunities. Luca was, yeah, three of seven at the foul line. He's been shooting great all year, but it just did not happen for him last night. As a team, Dallas shot only six of 13, 46%. There's your game. You're a team that's usually in the top five this year in terms of getting to the line. You barely got there, and then when you got there, you hit less than 50%. That's the game. Luka missed four. 
I think KP missed one, James Johnson missed one, and Willie Cauley-Stein missed one. Milwaukee, meanwhile, even though they were also abysmal thanks to Giannis at the line, they still won that battle, going 12 of 25. 12 of 25, and that's the better of the two teams, both in terms of makes and in terms of percentage. That is brutal. That's 48%, and that's better than what you were able to put together as a team. There's your game. You want to know where else your game is? Second chance points. Read its head again. Dallas, at one point in the fourth quarter, Milwaukee was winning the second chance points battle 20 to 5. And I made a note here of it. It was something crazy. It wasn't just the the basis of what we know in terms of like, oh, it was um, 20 to 5. No, no, no. We knew the percentage, like the field goal conversions in that case. Let me see if I can find that here. Uh, let me see. No, I'll have to find it here in a minute, but it's, it's brutal. It was something like Milwaukee was like, oh, here it is. Seven of 13 on second chance field goal attempts, whereas Dallas was two of nine. So 20 to five, seven of 13 versus two of nine. So even when you're getting the opportunities, you're not converting. Now, Dallas hit north of 50 rebounds last night. That's higher than their season average. That's good. And they had 11 offensive boards. You know what's bad? They gave up 57 rebounds. They gave up 16 offensive rebounds. They let a guy off Milwaukee's bench, Portis, whose season high was 12 rebounds. Now, he ended up with 13, so he set a new season high. But he had that point with like five minutes left in the third quarter. He was killing them on the glass for a while there. So Dallas's Achilles heels, fatal flaws, whatever you want to say, they were rearing their ugly heads. And the Mavericks, they were playing around it as best they could. In the first quarter, Luka, even though he was finding it hard to get to the line and even though his shot wasn't necessarily falling, in, in the first quarter, Dallas uh, had Luka score or assist on 20 of their 23 points. Luka is leading the NBA in usage rate, way north of even like James Harden. Now, obviously, it's, a, it's not a typical year for the, the Rockets and Harden, obviously, now with the Nets. But that's still something to, to call out. When your usage rate is that high, I don't care how young you are, that's going to burn you up over the course of a year. And how high it is for Luka in the, in the context of previous seasons and guys who led in that department, that is a concern. That's a concern for me. I want to see Luka get more help. I don't want to have to see him go out there and score or assist on 20 of 23 first quarter baskets that are points. That's, that's too much to ask in that situation for consistent sake. Obviously, for here and there and in a situation like last night, I have no problem with it. But I'm talking about like night to night, you want better balance on that front. So KP checked out of the game for the first time at the four minute, 30 second mark of the first quarter. That's what, like six and a half minutes approximately on the floor. Um, yeah, about close to seven minutes on the floor before he checked out. Now, he ends up, I feel like I got like an eyelash in my eye and it is driving me insane. But uh, he ends up playing 30 minutes approximately on the night, 29 minutes for KP. I said he would get 27. I think Rick really wanted him to be done when he checked out with like six minutes left in the game. And the situation late just kind of implored Rick to put him back in. But at that point, it kind of had gotten away because KP's rhythm wasn't still there. So something to point out here, Luca's driving the basket early on. I said earlier, 20 of 23 points are scored or assisted on by Luca. Dallas trails 30 to 23 after one. Giannis already has 10 points, three boards. Luca has nine and five. He played the entire first quarter. He would also play the entire third quarter. Uh, KP, he started okay. Five and four in the first quarter. That's nice. But KP would enter an absolute abyss for a while. KP would go two of 14 before finding a sudden rhythm, knock down three or four consecutive shots, then exit the game for what appeared to be the, the, you know, the rest of the game before checking in late, and he got a couple more cracks at it and missed. So KP's night... Very uneven. He ends up 6 of 19 from the field, including 2 of 7. We'll talk about that last shot KP got. That's obviously going to be a big takeaway and a big discussion point for this game. But uh, Dallas, 
Dallas didn't close the first quarter especially well. And Milwaukee made several plays there. They carried that momentum into the second quarter, opening up the second quarter on a 13-6 to run to stretch the lead that had been at one point just two points all the way to 43-29. That forces Rick into an early timeout. The Bucks are beating Dallas on the board at this point, and they're shooting 60% from the field. That's not going to get it done. So Rick does something a little surprising. He turns his attention... It's, I guess it's not surprising. It's the circumstances. We talked about it. They had five players out. They're in a situation where they have to look down the end of their bench. You know, Wes Awundu, who I, I made a video on the other the other day talking about how he might be an X factor for this team. 23 minutes for him, 3.6 rebounds. It's funny because someone commented on that video last night uh, ranting and raving about how I could have said he was an X factor when as a starter he gave three and six and 23 minutes. And like how garbage I was for having that assessment. And I'm like, dude, he's a bottom of the bench guy. He's a guy who the last two years has shot like 34, 35% from three and gives good defensive energy in minutes for, for a discount three and D guy at the end of your bench. What did you expect? Why did you think just cause you were going to pop him into the starting lineup? He was going to give you like 12 and seven. That's, that's unrealistic energy. You know, X factor doesn't mean that you have to score a bajillion points or grab a dozen boards, or block a bunch of shots. You can do little things that implement and impact your team and lift it up. So I think he's I think he's looking at it in too broad of a term in that regard. But a one starts, twenty three minutes. You know he looks fine. He's not blowing you away, but at the same time, I don't think he's killing you. And Dallas had to look further than that. They had to look to Josh Green. They had to look to. Dare I say, a man I did not think was going to get a lot of minutes. Now, he didn't get a lot of minutes in this game, but Tyrell Terry makes an appearance too, and in five minutes, he gets his second career basket on a nice drive to the basket, reverse layup with Giannis in pursuit, used the rim well to shield from the block, the blindside block that was damn sure coming and right on his heels. And he made a couple nice nifty play moves, you know? He drove to the basket in a pick and roll with Willie Cauley-Stein and made a great no-look pass in transition, or sorry, in traffic, that uh, allowed Cauley Stein to get a thunderous dunk. Um, he made another good pass, lead pass on the break to set up to set up an opportunity for Dallas in that regard that just didn't quite materialize. So, you know, five minutes for him, two, one, and two assists, 2.1 rebound, two assists, one of one from the field and a steal. Like, you see, uh, you see that basketball IQ and you see some of that playmaking ability. So, I'm encouraged, you know, I, again, I don't expect big things from him this year, but if you're in a pinch like you were last night and you go to him and he gives you a performance like that, I think that's pretty reasonable. That's pretty respectable for what you can expect. Now, my favorite play that he made actually was a situation where he got switched onto Brooke Lopez and managed to get a hand on the ball as Lopez is trying to pull up. And Lopez just flails and basically throws the ball over the backboard that you could have got caught in that matchup and made that kind of stand and avoided, you know, giving up the basket, but making the other guy look like a fool is kind of incredible. Like, that's so unprecedented for that circumstance. Like, you're just like, whoa, okay, I see you, yeah. But uh, you get some good minutes from Josh Green as well. He plays 19 minutes. He doesn't score. He's 0 of 2 from the field, but he gives you three boards uh, a couple of steals for Green as well. Now, he did have five fouls. Josh Green was burning through fouls uh, in this game. But, again, I liked the energy. I liked the length and athleticism and the defense he was showing. And, you know, if you're getting a couple steals, three steals out of your two rookies, that's pretty good in a desperate pinch. Now, you'd like more points, especially for Green, who played 19 minutes. But that's the part of his game that's going to take more time to round into form. So, Dallas in this situation, uh, being where where they were, I think they did pretty respectably for what they were up against and what they were dealing with. I think they did really well. Um, an advantage Dallas had as well was Giannis picked up his third foul, five minutes, 40 seconds left in the second quarter. And that comes off a veteran move from James Johnson, pump faking him, getting up in the air, and then jumping just forward enough, not enough to make it 
you know, an offensive foul where you're the one clearly initiating the contact. Giannis is coming forward. He's not going up and down. Ergo, Johnson's able to bait him into that. And that's a good veteran move there. Um, that's a good veteran move to get from one of your, you know, your defensive stalwarts on this team. So I liked that. Uh, I liked Luca. I liked Luca um, getting some rest as well. He, you know, the second quarter early on was a lot of the bench and a lot of the young guys. KP, he played like the first seven minutes of the game, and then he didn't play most of the second quarter. Luca got a lot of rest in the second quarter as well. And the Mavericks, scrappy as they were, were hanging around. Now the Bucks ended up extending their lead out. And let me see here, check my notes. They ended up extending their lead out, but uh, the Mavericks were right there. They were 55-47 at the half. You have 10-7 and seven from Luka in terms of points and assists. He's not rebounding for squat in the first half, but all things considered and where Milwaukee was at that point, Middleton already had 15, Giannis had 16, uh, Holiday 9, Lopez 7. Like Milwaukee was pretty much doing what Milwaukee does for the most part, even if they weren't shooting the three terribly well in the first half but it gave you a situation where you were on the road way outgunned because of your health situation and having to play a lot of young guys and yet you were there you were there at halftime Milwaukee is just two of nine at the line Dallas is four of eight which makes it even more painful that they attempted even fewer free throws in the second half but Milwaukee was 7 of 18 from 3. Dallas was 5 of 18, so neither team. I mean, Milwaukee is shooting like 40% from 3 in the first half. Uh, and they're shooting 51% from the field compared to 38% for Dallas. So Dallas makes a good charge here. They, they come out in the third quarter, and they make a late push that ends up, um, ends up scaling the lead down to 84-81. Lucas starts getting going. Tim Hardaway Jr. got really cooking in that third quarter as well. He ends up with 22 points for the game, 22 and five, or excuse me, five rebounds on nine of 16 shooting, four of eight from three. I think this is a rare case where Dallas, one of the mistakes they made in this game, they went away from Hardaway. He was absolutely a flamethrower in that third quarter. I think he had uh, 11 points. Yeah, 11 points in the third quarter um, alone, three of three from three. And yet they weren't continually going to him. And so that set him up in a situation where once they went away from him, they went away for way too long. I don't recall seeing him even get really another look until we were talking like late fourth quarter. And he was cold. He had cooled down by that time. And we saw a similar situation happen with KP. He got going as well in the third quarter a little bit, hit four shots in a row. And they were running plays for him, pin downs, getting him looks at the elbow. And he was knocking them down. He was hitting the Dirk statue shot. He was doing all kinds of KP mid-range game moves. And that was great. You saw some rhythm starting to come about. And after a 2-for-14 two and two for 14 start, he knocks down four straight shots. And you're like, okay, here we go, here we go. But it kind of goes away again. Then he checks out of the game for about half a quarter. And when he comes back in in the closing two minutes... You know, he gets, I think, a couple looks, and we know, obviously, about the last one, but he's out of rhythm. He's gone cold, he's, he's, and he talked about that after the game, which we'll get into as well. He just didn't have the rhythm, and his timing, being only his second game back, was not there. He was, he was bothered and felt like he was rushing things a little bit. So it's, uh, you know, it, it, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks to be in that situation, but... You know, KP, even though he didn't he didn't play great. We, you know, he had that little stretch there, third quarter, started the fourth quarter, I think, where he started getting going a little bit, started cooking, and you're like, okay, okay. But, you know, his defense was very good. He had a stand at one point on Brooke Lopez in the post, played great defense on him, forces a miss. Bobby Portis gets the rebound. Again, that happened a lot through the first three quarters. And then KP makes a recovery swat on him, and Dallas is going the other way. Like, that is an excellent play, although Portis does come back the next possession, get another offensive rebound, and get an and one. And he he just killed Dallas on the glass early on. Um, you know, Luka, he, he, Luka cooking late, and again, that means he's operating in crunch time, in the clutch, all that. 
that's great. That's where you want to step up and raise your game. And superstars, even if you've been struggling a bit throughout the night in terms of your own scoring and everything, what makes you special is your ability to turn it on. Now, he's he's shooting 7 of 16 from the field, but he's 0 of 5 from 3 through 3 quarters. And he's missing some gimmies. He's getting to the lane. He's not getting a lot of foul calls. He's getting pummeled in certain circumstances and not getting the calls. And you can tell it's frustrating him a little bit. But when Dallas is making this run in the third quarter, it's important to note Giannis was on the bench for nine minutes. The two-time reigning MVP was out of the game for nine minutes. And yeah, you cut the lead down from eight to three. That's good. But it took a late push in the third quarter just to get to that position. And, you know, you kind of played throughout the entire second half in this kind of pendulum effect where you're going from down two, down six, down four, down three, down. You're always within striking distance, but you're never getting over the hump. Every time you get the ball and you have an opportunity to either tie the game or take the lead, Dallas is falling apart. They're turning the ball over or they're not getting a quality look or they're just missing a wide open shot. And then Milwaukee goes down and splashes a three or gets a, an easy play, uh, an easy layup or an and one. Just something that takes some of that energy away from you. Um, and, you know, that's a shame because uh, you're playing really well. Milwaukee, again, is firing on pretty much all cylinders with its starters. 17 from Middleton through 17, 8 and 5 from Middleton through three quarters. Uh, he's basically what ends up being the difference in this game. Drew Holiday. 16 and 2 and 5, Lopez 10 and 9, and then Giannis at this point in 18 minutes has 18 and 7 on 8 of 12 shooting. If Giannis can fix his day, I mean, he's even hitting like jump shots. He, he hit a couple threes in this game. If, if you could just, if you're Giannis, figure out your free throw shooting that has just completely, completely abandoned you, you would be able to, I mean, you're winning MVP, so I guess it's like, how much more can you ask? Obviously a jump shot, but I'm just talking about like the domination factor because you get into a situation here where when Giannis is one of 10 from the line, you can tell he doesn't want to go to the line. And it is affecting him to a point where he gets a little, I think, hesitant at times to drive, even though he's a freight train that no one can stop. He gets a little hesitant to drive to the basket. And now he does hit a three on Dallas and you're like... Well, that's the correct thing to make him shoot a three with the shot clock expiring, especially one off the dribble. But, like, what are you going to do in that situation? How? What else can you ask? Um, you know, if that's what's going to beat you, that's what's going to beat you. But he's one of ten at the line, and Milwaukee is, has, stops going the offense through him. They start going to, like, Middleton, who's a 94% free throw shooter, and they're just avoiding at all costs, the honest, for a little bit, which is incredible. When you talk about, like, oh, he's the best player on the team, he's the best player in the league, uh, but we're not going to give him the ball. We're going to try to hide him a little bit because he's clearly not able to make free throws right now, and he's in his own head about it. That's kind of an incredible thing that I don't remember ever seeing that about a, a superstar player, let alone the best, one of the best players in the world, the best current player, at least as far as MVP voting is concerned, in the league the past two years. Dallas's second half was a good turnaround. I talked about how they were shooting 38%. In the first half, they dragged that percentage up to 43% uh, after the third quarter. They started to turn things around, and you know, part of that's Hardaway got cooking, but then they let him drift to the side. Uh, KP got cooking, and then they let him drift to the side. And then in the fourth quarter, Luka got going late. And he didn't drift to the side, but it's like we never had everything firing at once. We took turns, we alternated things out, and I think that hurt us. Um, let's see here. Yeah, it, it just it's a situation where Dallas in that fourth quarter turned things around. Let me see. In the fourth quarter, Dallas was shooting for most of the fourth quarter, like in that self-contained quarter they were shooting better than 60 percent in the first few minutes they were shooting like 73 percent now milwaukee was shooting 50 percent, but dallas was making a real charge and that's where you really started to see the seesaw effect of like down six down four down one down three and it just they could never get over the hump 
Now, a couple things you have happened here. KP logs his first double-double of the season. That's a, a nice milestone for him. Obviously, last year was a career best year for him in terms of rebounding and double doubles in general. He ends up with 15 and 10. Again, the shooting wasn't there, but I think you saw, again, two blocks in this game. You saw some good work from KP in those other areas. He's always going to give you positive gains in other areas, even if the shot's not necessarily falling. But uh, he gets his first double double. You get a double double out of Willie Cauley Stein as well, 11 and 11. Five of seven from the field and a block. I really liked what you got out of Willie Cauley Stein for the most part in this game. Um, and you get good minutes from James Johnson as well. I think he had a season high 13 points and he gets you. Now he doesn't get any rebounds, which is unusual, but you know, he's running the point forward. He gets you a couple blocks, a couple steals. He's five of nine from the field, hits a couple threes as well, including a big one. I think that finally gave Dallas their first lead since 10 9 in the first quarter. Like, a lot was working for Dallas, but we ultimately find ourselves in a situation where crunch time comes, and as we know, that was a major, major, major Achilles heel for this team last year, and it's not something that they could really deal with. They were abysmal in crunch time last year. In the clutch, they couldn't stop anybody. They couldn't execute their own offense. The spacing would go to hell. You wound up with a lot of late clock step back threes or desperate heaves not quality possessions. And so that's going to be a real test for this team this year. We see how much they've improved defensively, but we need to see how they're going to do in crunch time. So we come down now to the final few minutes of the game. Uh, Dallas is in a situation where they've been chasing all game long. They've had hot streaks from Tim Hardaway Jr., from Kristaps Porzingis, but they're just not able to get over that hump. They, they're they making mistakes in transition that's leading to drastic swings Milwaukee's way, where Milwaukee gets a three, and then uh, Dallas will score. Dallas will get a stop. They'll have a chance then to tie or take the lead. And Johnson, who ran point forward pretty well at times last night, at one point he took an inbound pass and just kind of leisurely went coast to coast just because the defense never shifted over to him. He got a good a good roll right to the basket and a nice finish. And, uh, you know, he has a situation where he gets in, it's not a pick and roll situation, but you have Collie Stein rolling to the basket and he fires this bullet of a pass. And it's not a good pass. I, I like Johnson. I like his passing ability. It's not a good pass because it's to Collie Stein's back shoulder. So he's rolling to the rim and he's throwing to the back shoulder. Collie Stein has to try and turn to gather it. And Collie Stein's not even squared up to him looking for the ball in that moment because Johnson looked like he was going to take a shot, like a, a short mid-range shot. And on the roll, there, there's a miscommunication. It's a costly turnover. Milwaukee comes down and splashes a three. And it's a, it's a major momentum swing. You had moments like that just stack up, stack up, stack up. A lot of and ones in this game for both teams, but it seemed like Milwaukee was really getting whatever they wanted in that regard. Um... Johnson also racked up five fouls. There was a couple times he got way too easy of an and one off of Johnson. The good thing is he couldn't make the free throw to save his life, so you were kind of still getting away with it. Uh, Dallas made other costly mistakes where Milwaukee would shoot a free throw. Giannis would barely graze the rim, but it would go off Johnson's leg and roll out of bounds. Like, you were failing to secure possessions, and Milwaukee gets another crack at it. Giannis gets fouled again, goes back to the line, misses both free throws. So you're getting reprieves, but you're making costly mistakes that are keeping you from seizing control in this game. And that was kind of a story throughout. Dallas's field goal shooting was significantly better throughout the fourth quarter. Uh, like I said, the first few minutes, they're shooting 73% from the field. Now, as much as I'd like to credit their defense, Milwaukee was also shooting 50%, which is way too high if you want to win a game or mount a real comeback. But you're in a situation where... Um, Milwaukee gets to the bonus with seven and a half minutes remaining. That's insane. That's really bad execution by Dallas. Thankfully, Milwaukee, um, you know, Middleton's a phenomenal free throw shooter, 94% this year. But Giannis is abysmal, especially in this game. And this is where I talked about where Milwaukee stops going to him. It's like they get in the bonus and uh, Skin, Skin Wade on the broadcast, the Mavs broadcast, was talking about how, you know, I think I consider Hakka Giannis here. And it's not a bad idea. 
reach down to the end of your bench, find a couple guys who might have only one foul, guys who don't play a whole lot, and uh, start fouling Giannis because he's, you can tell, he does not want to be at the foul line. He looks like he's about to S his pants standing at the free throw line waiting to shoot his shots. He's one of ten. I think he'd missed like nine in a row. And yet seven minutes to work with. The the hack a rule doesn't come into play until the final two minutes unless that's been revised and I missed that. But why wouldn't you do that? I thought it was a very valid point, especially with how guys like Middleton and Lopez were still cooking and still getting damage done. DJ Augustine, of all people, was making some veteran plays, some crafty plays there in the third, late third quarter and fourth quarter as well. So something, something to consider there. I don't know why that is. So entering the clutch time, final five minutes of a game within five points, uh, Dallas... It's a one-point game at that point. Dallas had shot 73% from the field through the first seven minutes of the fourth quarter. Johnson was playing physical defense. He was getting stops. I know he had five fouls. I know he had some real blunder plays a couple times where he had a chance during Dallas's charge opportunities to try and take the lead or tie the game. He had a corner three that he had just too much time. He just almost like completely came apart mentally because he got such a clean look and he airballs a corner three shooting it over the rim entirely like he had some mistakes but he also made some really nice plays here as I said before uh, he has some physical defense he he gets assigned to Giannis a whole lot in this game I'm just taking a peek here I was curious how many people we had in the house looks like 23 Um, he's playing physically He's really making them work for it. And uh, he's he's getting stops. He's making good plays that are helping this team win. Uh, let's see here. Check back in my notes. Yeah, in the cl- in crunch time, Giannis hits a, th- a three, a desperation three almost. Uh, and then Luka takes over. Luka has a span where he scores Dallas's seven straight points for Dallas. Um, then he gets that corner three to Johnson that gives the Dallas Mavericks their first lead of the game, 104, not of the game, since 10-9, their first lead. It it was a 104-103 lead at that point on the Johnson three. And Dallas gets a stop. You get a chance then, Luka with a brilliant find in transition. We know Luka's passing ability. We know 57 watching. All right, cool. Uh, Appreciate that, Kent. Um, he gets a leak out opportunity for Willie Cauley Stein, throws a beautiful pass down the court. And I think it was Middleton made a great save because Cauley Stein's going to get a transition dunk to extend the lead uh, at that point to 106 103. And instead, it fouls Cauley Stein, it puts him on the line. He makes one of two. And so it keeps it, again, an opportunity. It's a missed point. And uh, that's a great play by Middleton. Middleton's a great player. There's a reason why before he signed his deal, his new deal before last year, he was a hotly talked about commodity. If Dallas could somehow lure him away from Giannis and Milwaukee, it wasn't going to happen. Milwaukee could offer the most money. They're a better team, and Giannis was there. But uh, that was the kind of projection that people were looking at. So the broadcast as well makes a point about how these situations here, games within games decided by three points or fewer, Dallas had only had two games on the year like that. And uh, within three points, sorry, let me rephrase that. Dallas only had two games coming into the night within three points in the final two minutes. Milwaukee had only had one. This was kind of uncharted territory for both teams this year. Uh, Middleton, (laughs) Middleton took over. He splashes a three with 147 left, forcing a Dallas timeout. Uh, The Mavericks within two have a chance to tie. Luka gets the basket. He doesn't get fouled. I think Milwaukee just makes a good play. They force Luka with a miss on the drive. Luka doesn't even argue it, so that tells me definitely there, or maybe he's trying to keep it in, but I think Milwaukee just made a good play there. And Luka had made, like I said, seven straight points by himself, and then he assisted on the Johnson three. At that point, Luka Luka was easily over 10 assists, you know, start of the second half, basically. It was the rebounding that was really low for him most of the game. And then he ends up making a push where he falls one rebound shy of yet another triple-double. So the last five Luka games, I got a stat on that somewhere. The last five Luka games, 
he has either made a triple-double or been one rebound shy of a triple-double. Over the last five games, he's averaging 30.6 points per game, 11.4 rebounds, and 11.2 assists. Incredible. I mean, that's real MVP stuff there, obviously. But back to the game. Um, Dallas gets a couple good looks and ultimately is not able to get over that hump. Once once uh, Middleton got cooking, he hits a couple big shots for Milwaukee. They can't really get it. Luke had that drive that didn't go. Dallas gets a stop. KP checks back into the game. And then you have a series where this is where the real conversation and contention comes in. Luka makes the right play first when Milwaukee brings the attention over. He gets a wide open look for Trey Burke. Burke just misses it. Burke had had a pretty decent game to that point. Burke had 13 points, three boards on five of 12 shooting and three of six, three of five at the time from three. It's a great look. Luka made the right play. It just didn't go. Well, Willie Cauley-Stein gets the offensive rebound. Here's where the kind of controversy stems. Luca wanted a timeout. Mavericks had a timeout. Carlisle declined to take it. And this is being spun by this is being spun by like ESPN and others as a rift moment of sorts where Luca, yes, visibly upset that Dallas declines to take the timeout. Carlisle will get into his comments after the game, but Dallas declines to call the timeout in a kind of scramble mode. Burke, uh, Cauley Stein gets the ball back to Burke, who curls around the ba- uh, curls around the paint, finds KP for another good look. It's a long three, but we've seen KP's range, you know, dating back to last year. How many logo shots did KP have? KP gets a great look. He pulls the trigger and it misses badly badly it's not an air ball but it misses the rim entirely bricks off the backboard on the opposite side from his angle it's ugly and uh yeah milwaukee gets the rebound dallas fouls middleton of course is who gets fouled so he basically ices the game with 7.8 seconds left i know dallas gets another basket and that then lopez goes to the line and makes one of two but and even then on that last Free throw from Lopez. He misses the second one. Luca gets the ball, shoots a three-quarter shot. That surprisingly looked like he had a chance, and he got it off in time. That could have forced overtime. It misses. Milwaukee wins 112-109. That snaps the win streak at four. Uh, I think the story of the game kind of comes down to the Mavericks in the clutch. They made several great plays. They, they executed well, but for whatever reason, they got into that final minute and they could not quite get over the hump. Milwaukee, I felt like at times, whenever Dallas made a real push to take control of the game, I thought the Bucks, like great teams do, like uh, quality teams do, one of the best teams in the league, they answered the bell. And I think Milwaukee, with their experience, still trumped Dallas in those moments. Every time Dallas looked like they were ready to take control, and Dallas, you know, they've had their struggles there, obviously, well documented. But Dallas failed to secure control at that point. And Milwaukee made the made more plays, made more winning plays when it mattered. So, you know, if you're getting great looks from Luka, KP, and Burke in the final minute, any of which would tie or take the lead, you're doing your job. You know what I mean? Like, you've done everything you could ask for reasonably. Now, we can talk about the decision at the end of the game, and before we get into that, I'm going to, I'm going to get into... A next segment here where I take a look at Carlisle's comments on the play and Luca's comments on the play. So 